20% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. For Valerie, a bit of space to line it up. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Uprising Career Mode here with Southampton and FIFA 19. As today we are in episode 12, as we're back to 5 games an episode from now on until probably next season again in the transfer window. But regardless of that, our first game of 5 is going to be against Liverpool at home. Last season we did beat them 2-0 if I'm not mistaken, but we did, I, I don't remember the score on specifically, but we did beat them here at home. So let's hope we can repeat the same exact thing that we did against Liverpool then and do it in this episode. As you can see I'm changing Liverpool's lineup at the beginning, I kind of forgot. So you can see me going back and changing their lineup as well as me uh, organizing our lineup for today's tough game against this tough opposition. In real life, as I'm recording this, Liverpool have won the Champions League final, so congrats to them, they truly deserved it. I think every Man City fan would agree in saying that they truly deserve it. I mean, it would be quite a shame for any football fan to see a team who put so much effort in getting 90 to 97 points and the Champions League finals and getting no silverware whatsoever. So I think from a, comp from a competitive aspect, there's mutual respect on both parties, or in general, from every fan in the world, for what Liverpool have managed to achieve this season and therefore successfully getting the European Cup as a reflection of that. As you can see, so Mohamed Salah is the man, the talking point in this game. He's going to be obviously the one of the biggest guys that we're going to need to stop in this game. He's going to be super tough and we're going to need to be able to stop him in this game with our players here. As you can see, we are lining up with the same exact lineups that we've had in the previous games and the previous game against Chelsea where we won. So, a winning formula don't change, that's exactly what I'm doing here, although this formula is also uh, the same exact team that we used in prior games, but it's the strongest team and it's early on in the season, so I'm, I'm continuing with the same team that we lined up here today. So, kickoff, Liverpool love it, first chance of the game in the 8th minute, Mohamed Salah, the same guy we talked about pre in pre-game, with a chance with his right foot but couldn't score it in the 14th minute, Mohamed Salah goes through, turns, and looks for Chamberlain, and Chamberlain makes it 1-0 here for, for the away side, as the away side take the lead. A great goal by Liverpool, as the team who were playing in purple with a sensational strike there to make it 1-0 with his right foot and give us the 1-0 lead. A couple minutes later, they had a chance again, but denied by us, and then we hit the crossbar 72 minutes in. Super close from us as we almost equalized in the 72nd minute. 83 minutes in, we had a chance. Diego Jota with a little feint to find it into Matt Target down the line. Matt Target to whip it in freely in the box is Che Adams, who just blazes it over the bar on the number 10. Hasn't scored a goal yet this season, but can he do it today? We're about to find out. We're going to do it now. We're about to find out the ball. It's found to hang. He Chang, the substitute with so much pace, going through one goal. Can he score? Now, how many times have we missed these opportunities? These opportunities need to be goals. And sadly, that will be it for the first game of this episode. The final whistle goes 1 0 to score to Liverpool. We needed to equalize there. And I think uh, a learning outcome from that is I should not take. I take. I always like taking the extra touches. You know, that, that when you press the right stick forward because he has the pace so I tried to continue to continue that momentum and push him on pushing that right stick you know uh, and uh, I did it too much which left you know he chain with no space to shoot and Allison closed him down easily there so that's a learning outcome for me I'm gonna need to uh, a learning point for me and that's gonna need to be improved next time we're in one-on-one -on -one situations like that in the future our second of five games in this episode is against one of, is against is a, the first time we're playing a newly promoted team this season in the for, in the shape of Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough coming here at home with currently sitting in last place with I think only one point in the Premier League table. So they're gonna of course look to get a win, but we are definitely gonna look to get our second win 
uh, in this whole season so far as we've only got one win so far this season which was against Chelsea and are we going to be able to do it in this game you're about to find out it's going to be what well, that's going to be the aim that's what we're going to look for for certain in this match as the first chance falls to us three minutes in just after kickoff Hoiberg finds a chance after the pass by Diogo Jota from the left wing but Randolph the Irish international with a great save to deny him from scoring the 1-0. Hoiberg in the 22nd minutes finds its side into Che Adams, in to James Ward-Prowse, and the number 16 hasn't been that great for the, uh, for the past couple games. And he, again, couldn't show his quality there. They had a chance in the 48th minute. John B. Mikel, luckily, not the greatest finisher, and Angus Gunn standing on his feet with a brilliant save as we hit the crossbar a couple minutes later in the second half. And we were just unlucky there. That is the final whistle. The final whistle goes from a second out of five games, and we draw this game. We couldn't allow ourselves to draw. We needed to get a win as we drew here in the Riverside Stadium. As you're about to see, we're going into our first Capital, uh, Cap Carabao One, uh, Carabao Cup, not Capital One Cup anymore, Carabao Cup game. As we change our second team lineup, I'm not playing it, I'm simming it, but I'm still changing it due to the fact we signed all these different youth talents and all these uh, different players in, in the transfer window that are I'm varying up the team we could bolster the team so that's exactly what I'm doing as I'm changing here bring Eric Garcia and there I think Alfie Jones as well as Billy Cook so uh, yeah you're about to see what went off in the in the simulated game against Exeter City as we're about to finish the lineups there I'm sorry I'm still with a cold as you're about to see, we're about to get into the Carabao Cup game in Exeter City in St. James Park, obviously Exeter City Stadium, as we are away from home in our first game in the Carabao Cup. Can we take a victory here? We simulated 2-1-0 for us from Daniel James, and Armstrong doubles our lead to make it 2-0. So we go through, last season obviously we got knocked out in the first round, this time we don't, and we get West Ham in the next round. You guys will find that out in the next episode, but we do get West Ham in the next round. So it's going to be a tough game as we get our youth squad reports here. We find a couple good players. This Jan Brower, I was looking at him for a couple minutes. I was thinking, should I put him in our team? And at the end, I do, but he, he looked like a sensational player, but he looked kind of iffy because his overall was kind of low, but... I don't know. I have to. We're gonna be able to. If we manage to train him, he might be a sensational player here in the future. You never know. As we go into our third of five games in this episode, technically, if you're technically speaking, our fourth since we simmed one, but our third played out of five in this in this episode against Arsenal at home. So obviously, the first one we lost against Liverpool at home. The second one we drew against Middlesbrough away. After one year against Arsenal, what can we do? Can we bounce back as we make a couple changes in this game? To see any results here. To see if there's any going to be any result change. Obviously, as you can see, I did forget to change Arsenal's lineup. At the time, I was kind of frustrated with our results, but uh, I wasn't trying to cheat. But the thing is, you're about to see Arsenal's lineup was actually pretty realistic for once. Like they put Alex Iwobi, Lacazette, Ozil, Mkhitaryan. Elneny was the only guy who had could potentially think is, is a player who's unrealistic to be in the lineup only Eleni but even then Eleni isn't that bad of a player so the rest of the lineup is pretty decent only Aubameyang is sitting on the bench so to be honest if you're talking about realism this is a realistic uh, Arsenal lineup so whatever we get in this game to be honest if it's a win if it's a draw or if it's, if it's a loss, loss it doesn't matter but it's a still a pretty decent lineup for a team that, that, that faces against us Torreira's in there and such so yeah, first chance of the, of the game though falls to Arsenal, regardless of what I just said. The ball whipped in, down low, in to Iwobi as he hits the crossbar only six minutes in. And Arsenal looking threatening already from the off as we have a chance. The ball falls now to Mason Holgate. Can we counterattack? Mason Holgate with a sensational ball of chance. Can he get his first goal of the season? Yes, he does. The number 10 finally gets on, uh, gets his campaign off and going here in the St. Mary's. As he scores his first goal of the season against Arsenal, eight minutes in. So right after Arsenal hit the crossbar, we go the other way and score. That's the Premier League football for you. As a couple minutes later in the 30th minute, we have a chance again. The ball from Mason Mount finds Hoiberg. I was about to say, in this game, we actually took out James Ward-Prowse because he was pretty disappointing. 
in the in the in the beginning of the in the last episode and in this episode. So I put Mason Mount in the guy who scored against Chelsea and look at what he done. He got an assist there and uh, yeah, unluckily 43 minutes and we get the two. We can see two one. Can Arsenal come back in this game? This game looking intense already as it is. I was, I was gonna say Mason Mount coming into this game and making the influence that we needed that we missed as when James Ward Prowse was playing on the pitch. As you can see, Eng is not happy with it there. Sakai found it through Lacazette who hit the post. Eng is gonna go to touch, but he hit the post. And Alex Wilby with potentially his easiest goal in his career as the number 36 scores his fourth, fourth, uh, his fourth goal of the season as it's 2-1 to Arsenal. And we have a chance from the kickoff once again. Can we do something? Bornal finds it inside of Mario Lamina. Outside of Matt Target. Matt Target down the line to Mason Mount who's on so watch in this game. Mason Mount cutting back. Mason Mount looking for the strike off the post. And look who it is. It's Che Adams as I told you. Mason Mount, look at his influence in this game. He's telling everyone in the crowd to relax because it's 3-1 and exactly after Arsenal scored, he scores in this game to make it 3-1. What a goal by Jay Adams. He scores on the double in this game. He hasn't scored no goals this season, but in this game alone, he scored two. So sensational performance by him. As luck as it gets a chance in the 58th minute, but denied by Angus Gunn. A sensational save by him as in the 59th minute, the ball found through to... Mason Olgate down to Mount through to Jay Adams. And what a cheeky goal to get your hat trick. Mason Mount with another assist. And Jay Adams with the cheekiest finish he'll probably see all season. And a finish of a strike of an absolutely sensational striker as he gets his hat trick in this game. Prior to this game, he scored zero goals. But in this game, he's gotten himself a hat trick and he runs to the uh, substitutes as we make the score 4-1 against Arsenal here at home. Look at that for a cheeky attempt. And he gets it past the German goalkeeper. And Bern Leno with no chance there as he makes substitutions. Mason Mount and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think it was Redmond coming off. And obviously getting a standing ovation that he needed. Mason Mount there as the final whistle goes. And we beat Arsenal at home 4-1. You can see Che Adams getting the match ball with a sensational performance as we beat Arsenal 4-1 in this game. Our fourth of five in this episode is going to be against West Brom. Another newly promoted team. The only one we haven't played so far, not including this game, would, would be against their uh, Birmingham rivals. Birmingham City. That will be coming in the next episode as you guys will find out. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm co tomorrow. I'm going on, on a, on a week-long trip, so I won't be able to be, uh, I won't be able to upload for a week. But I hope this episode will drop by tomorrow, as I'm dropping episode 11 today, and uh, everything will be a good from there. So this is the lineup that we're putting. We're putting the same lineup that we did against. Arsenal, but the only difference is Billy Cook is, is going to be at center back. You guys are about to find out. West Brom with a fairly Premier League uh, level side. You know, after they go, got down, they still have some Premier League players with them, like Hagazi, Bartley, Neom, and that's exactly what they're showing there. That's exactly uh, reminiscent of, of, of what they managed to achieve in the championship. They managed to go up with a Premier League team, and that's exactly why they're here. Nine minutes in, Mason Mount, the man of the match of the last game, scores an absolute banger into the top corner. Jukes the defender one way, jukes the defender the other way, and this is the Mason Mount show, ladies and gentlemen. Last year there was the James Ward Press show, and now it's the Mason Mount show. James Ward Press is going to have to do a lot to get him out off the throne currently, and the number 12 coming from Chelsea with a sensational strike to make to open the scoring in this game. So Mason Mount, what a bargain he's looking to be, as we've signed him I think for only like 6 million pounds or something, or like even less due to the fact that we sold Stevens the other way. Regardless of that, we have another chance. Redmond denied in the 34th minute by the former Man United goalkeeper Sam Johnston as they have a chance West Brom in the second half uh, next second half actually the end of the first half uh, Smith Rowe turning juking in defenders finding it into Jay Rodriguez and the former Southampton man 
with a great finish into the top corner to make it 1-1. One, one. And West Brom, in this career mode save, are actually sitting above us currently in the table. So what a win, and what an important win could it be if we beat them. But if West Brom beat us, it would definitely help their cause. The newly promoted team, as we, in the second half, start off greatly. Look at this, Diego Jota with his bit of magic to get through, and finds Lamina denied by the goalkeeper as we have a chance in the 81st minute. Actually, no, it's West Brom's chance in the 81st minute. It drops to their player, and now the attack is on. Solomon Rondon into Emil Smith Rowe, the former Ar Arsenal player. Back into Emil Smith Rowe from Kieran Gibbs. The two oh, former Arsenal players connect. Ball hits off the cross by Solomon Rondon, and couldn't be cleared as West Brom. Surely, surely they're going to take the victory now here in the author and said, I was absolutely distraught. I did not know how to react after this goal. Douglas Louise, the former Man City man, sticks it in, and I was so annoyed. I wanted to get a victory, and that was so close. We were so close, unless. One last chance on, in the game. Jared Bowen going down the line. We subbed him in. Jared Bowen in the box, in the middle. Who's, who's there? It's Che Adams, the guy who scored a hat-trick in the previous game. Scores another one in this game to make it 2-2, so the game wasn't over. And now it is 1-2-2, one, one, two, two, sorry, is the final score as we get a draw, a critical draw in this game as Che Adams scoring 4-2, and two, so he's back in action, Che Adams back in his regular form as our fifth and final game is going to be against Wolves, and are we going to be able to take the form that we had against, against Arsenal West Brom to the Wolves game you're about to find out. As we line up some players here, I'm planning to give Liam McGuinness. Uh, our youth player and uh, and uh, Smith, or no other youth player, a chance in the running in the substitutes. That's exactly what I did. That's the only change, basically, that I made in this game. Besides Tom Kearney going on the left wing, Diogo Jota on the right, in place of Nathan Redmond, because I wanted a little change after the, our previous game. Tom Kearney hasn't really started all season long, and I wanted to see if his influence could actually influence our results. You're about to find out, as you can see, commentators here talking about the... the, the, the Sensational season that Bournemouth are currently having. Bournemouth sitting in third in the beginning of the season, but obviously that means nothing because it's only the beginning of the season. We're trying to rack up as many points as we can, and the question is, can we do it in this game as well? We're about to find out. The only change, obviously, I said for us is that uh, Tom Kearney is playing. Obviously, uh, Diogo Jota is playing against his former team. I don't. I think Sofian Buffon is, might be sitting on the bench. Obviously, we sold him. Uh, plus Sofia, we bought him plus Sofia on Buffalo's Mason Mount still makes it in the lineup after a sensational run of form recently. And Wolves lineup is as so. Doherty, obviously a player that we wanted. Uh, Cody, Mexer, Johnny. So a strong back four. Yusuf pulls on the big Dane up top. Can he make the influence that Wolves need? We have a chance in the seventh minute. Jay Adams, the man on form. Hits the bicycle kick, but in past beats the keeper and beats the post, but hits the side netting. We have a chance in the 17th and 18th minute. Actually, what a leverage! <laughs> I mean, what a leverage on the shot he got there, Marilyn Miller. What an absolute strike to lever that ball. Lever that ball, sorry. Into the top corner. You're about to see that again as he goes to celebrate with Carl Darlow and Huang He Chang, who seem to be waiting there for everyone who wants to celebrate with him every time we score a goal. It's pretty interesting. As look at that, the. The Southampton fans are absolutely in elation right now. A sensational goal by the number 18. Look at that. Just cuts through the ball. That's just technique and a half. Cuts through the ball. And no chance for Louis Patricio in goal. No chance if we put three keepers in goal. If we have another chance in the 34th minute, can we double our lead? This looks like it's going to be a fast paced game. Look at this. We're playing quick football. Quick rooster wow football. As the ball finds itself to Tom Carey, the former full of man who loves that top corner, who loves scoring these types of goals. It's his third time he scored this exact same goal. First time against Man United and the second time. I don't remember against who. He was actually, I think, I think it was maybe Liverpool? Yeah, Liverpool. And he scores it again against Wolves. So he loves that top corner finish, that opposite corner finish. Look at the football we're playing currently, putting pressure on Wolves as we win it back again. Mason Mount running it through to Che Adams, who looks to make it another goal. Che Adams, a couple minutes after we make it 3-0 in the 41st minute. It's a sensational goal by Che Adams as he gets 5-3. So what a return from him in this, in this episode. 
Fire from three for the number 10 Jay Adams. Look at this for a finish. He loves finding the top corner Jay Adams as much as Tom Kenny does. And that is no mistake about it. A great goal by our striker. And he will surely get deserve an England call-up soon. I'm talking about England call-ups. Wait, you have to see this highlight. The ball whipped in by uh, Lamina into Bornau. In to Oybeer who falls. The ball falls right back into Jay Adams as he makes it his sixth goal in three games so a sensational that's all that's two goals every game in the past three games for Che Adams so a sensational return for Che Adams our number 10 and talking about England call so I was gonna say if you guys want me to to, uh, to go into the English national team I could activate that obviously because I made my manager English in this game uh, through the catalog tell me because in the, uh, the Euros are actually starting after this season so we can make a fun England uh, England, a fun English adventure in the Euro 2020. Uh, if we take the job, that is, or if you want me to take any other job, you can keep. You can uh, write that in the comment section below. I don't really mind, as we have a chance in the 73rd minute to make it five. Tom Kearney going through, loves that corner and goes for it again. Talk about consistency. That's his fourth time scoring that exact same goal in the top corner. Tom Kearney. I'm giving the opportunity in this game. He's grasping it with both hands. He's telling me why are you, am I not playing week in and week out? And that's exactly the same question I'm having. What a goal by Tom Kearney is the number six. Makes it 5-0 for us as we bring in Smith and Liam McGuinness for Mason Holgate and Mason Mount as we get the youth players that run in in this game. Wolves have a chance in the 83rd minute. It's cleared. James McFrouse finds it to Tom Kearney. He finds it in to Smith. Smith. The youth player finds it into Adams. He finds it through James Ward Prowse. Can he make it six? There's no way James Ward Prowse off the bench. James Ward Prowse rocketing that ball into the back of the net as we've done in the whole entire game. Six nil here to Southampton, ladies and gentlemen. Six nil. And I repeat, you're about to, I think you're about to see the sliders. I think you've seen the sliders. No chance for Ray Patricio there as he gets a hand for the number six, on the number 16 shot. But what a game as it ends here with 6-0 the final scoreline against Wolverhampton. So talk about entertainment value. Champs with 6-3 and three in 3. So he's truly, well truly back ladies and gentlemen. Back in the top scoring sh uh, charts and back in, in form. As that will do it for this episode 5 games. In this episode, as next game, as next episode, you see we're playing against Birmingham City. But if you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell as we get through one more scout report. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys later for episode number 13, probably next week. Bye bye.